Hello everyone and welcome to AI with Sohini where we talk about anything and everything AI. If you're tuning in for the first time, this is the channel where we talk about a wide spectrum of applications for artificial intelligence. So we talk about natural language processing, we look at computer vision and so many of the use cases of the algorithms. We talk about laptop systems, careers and so on. So if you're interested, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Now, today's video is going to be an introductory video into this new topic in and around medical imaging, which is called whole slide imaging. Whole slide imaging is very different from standard medical image applications, specifically for the reason because the magnifications of the images is so extreme, the size of an uncompressed image can be as much as four gigabytes. Now imagine typically we look at images which are 512 by 512 or maximum 1024 by 1024 whenever we are feeding it into a typical deep learning application. However, in such situations where the pixelation is so high, where it is impossible to feed in a normal image as is to any deep learning or to any model whatsoever. In such situations where the images are such high resolution and the dimensions typically do not align with standard image processing algorithms, they have to be treated very differently. And that is the field of WSI or whole slide imaging. Now let's start by understanding what is whole slide imaging. Now whole slide imaging is also known as virtual microscopy and it is typically an extremely high res complete microscopic slide and it has a very high definition you know imagery or components within it. So if you have any biological tissue so typically it is used for for mapping the cellular level information in biological tissue and that can be for histopathology images such as the examples given in this particular Kegel page. Now um, the the data sets, again, they can vary, the, the sizes can vary a lot. Let's talk about some of the challenges posed by WSI images. First off, standard libraries will not work that are used to read and write such WSI files just because they are so heavy and bulky in nature. Their extensions typically are .dcm or .dicom, and they can also be jpx, jp2, and they can also be very specific TIFF files as well. So typically such histopathology images or mitochondrial images in these cases may have several instances of nucleic regions in them, but that need to be separated and isolated. So the typical mechanism that is used in such WSI images is first off patching the image. So taking a whole WSI image and generating sub patches of maybe 32 by 32 or at max 64 by 64 out of them. And these patches can be extracted as a tiled sequence or they can also be overlapping tiled sequences. Once such a huge image has been chunked into these patches, these smaller patches are then fed into traditional deep learning algorithms such as mask or CNN, or you can also pass them through a standard unit in order to do batch-wise segmentation of these different regions of interest. Now, one major difference between a WSI image and standard medical images of decent, of similar, you know, shapes and sizes as any other image is the fact that the evaluation protocol is distinctly dissimilar. And that is the reason why WSI images have to go through their own evaluation protocols. So evaluation in this case could be semantic segmentation followed by detection of the IOU, the jacquard or the dice coefficient, precision recall, and so on and so forth. Mask or CNN or counting the number of nucleic regions per patches is not a good idea in such situations, just for the reason as your counting will go off whenever you are trying to merge all the patches back to generate the whole slide image before evaluation. Now that we understand the challenges corresponding to a WSI, let's get into how annotation and modeling for WSI images would look like using V7. So I start with the Mitosis WSI CCMT training set. And again, this is a pretty large data set. It's, it's almost 13 gigabytes. And once this is unpacked, it looks like this. So these are all of the different files. And notice here, a particular file can actually go up to two gigabytes in size. So now as a first step, what I do is I go into my V7 platform and I upload the images. And again, although you will see that a standard uh, TensorFlow-IO library will fail, 
it actually gets opened up in the v7 platform which is amazing so when we open up this DICOM file, this is how it opens up. And for every single frame, you can actually modify the brightness, the color, the contrast, so that the regions of interest are you know, extracted as well as you like. And as you keep moving, you will be able to see all of the regions of interest as you want to you know, annotate them uh, specifically. So here is how I wanted to show you as you're going from slide 650 to 651, and so on and so forth you can see literally that it is you can see the regions of interest that they are changing now let's start annotating Once the images are annotated, you can export them in a JSON format, which will tell you exactly what was the slide number and what were the regions of interest that were next to it. So this way you can use V7 to migrate yourself in such tricky situations, which is a DICOM images, specifically WSI images that are extremely bulky in order to read them, annotate them, and in order to model deep learning algorithms on them. I hope you found this useful and stay tuned for the next video.